my govan and welcome to the tolkien lore channel i'm the tolkien geek and this is going to be the first time that i kind of delve into what if scenarios in lord of the rings and i'm not going to do a whole bunch at one time necessarily but the general theme that i'm going to be working on in terms of doing this type of video is working on things that are suggested within the story itself as things that might have gone differently and in that vein the first one i want to talk about is what might have happened if Faramir had gone to Rivendell instead of Boromir? And there is, well, first I'll start off kind of explaining why that is a serious alternative that might have happened, give a little of the background, and then we'll talk about the things that might have changed based on that difference. So let's get started. So if you've only seen the movie, you're probably not aware of this, but in the novel, when Boromir first gets up to talk about why he's at the Council of Elrond, he talks about the fact that he had this dream, and that's, you know, he had the same dream, basically, at least as far as we can tell in the movie, though he goes into less detail in the movie than in the book. But what he doesn't say in the movie is that the same dream was had by Faramir, his brother, although he doesn't name him at that point, before he had it, and more than once, actually. So Faramir had this dream more than one time, which by itself suggests that perhaps to the extent that fate was trying to intervene and get somebody to go to uh, Rivendell, it would probably have been Faramir that was, you know, the, the preferred choice by, be it the Valar or Iluvatar, whoever it was that was, you know, trying to manipulate, you know, one of the, one of the two brothers to go. And later on in the, in Return of the King really is where we get the information mostly, but we also get a little bit of uh, hinting at it sort of in the, in the two towers where Frodo and Faramir talk we find out that uh, Boromir went as being the elder and the hardier of the two. That's Faramir's words, and he says that both are true. Probably so. Um, in The Return of the King, we get a little bit more detail because Gandalf and Denethor and Faramir have conversations uh, where we actually see that Denethor may or may not have had a real you know, say in the whole issue. We certainly get the idea that Boromir put himself forward and really pushed for it, and Gandalf kind of uses that as a way of saying to Denethor, look, it's not your fault he died. He's the one that wanted it. Faramir, on the other hand, actually says to Denethor that it was his counsel that prevailed, which led to Boromir going instead of Faramir. So there's probably a little bit of both going on. Denethor probably wanted Boromir to go in some way. It's not really clear how it all played out, but certainly there's some indication that between Denethor and Boromir, one or both, uh, the the will of whichever you know greater power was trying to move things along was in some way thwarted or at least misdirected in that you Boromir went instead of Faramir. And the reason, of course, that we would think that Faramir would be the better choice is Faramir is the better of the two brothers. And again, if you've only seen the movies, that may not be obvious. But in the book, it really is clear, and even in the appendices, Tolkien makes it abundantly clear that Faramir is the better of the two, at least when it comes to handling the ring. Boromir is the greater leader of men in a lot of ways, and the greater warrior, which is not to slight Faramir's skill in that category, either of those two categories. But Boromir is, because that's kind of his main focus, that is what he's actually very good at, and he is better at that than Faramir, although Faramir is a worthy captain and warrior in his own right. But in the, in the, like I said, in the appendices, we actually get an explicit reference to the fact that Faramir would have, you know, he, he passed the test better than Boromir. So then that leads to the question of how would things have actually turned out different had Faramir actually been the one to go to Rivendell and accompany Frodo on his quest? Let's take a look at that. At the Council of Elrond, Boromir does behave more or less the same in the movie and the book, although in the movie they do make it a bit more extreme. In the book, when Aragorn announces his identity and basically says he's the heir of Isildur, Boromir kind of gives him a, a, a look that's like, really? That seems hard to believe. He doesn't outright say, like he does in the movie, Gondor has no king, Gondor needs no king. He doesn't say that because that would be really, really bad of him to say. And Boromir is not that bad of a character in the book. So you do have a little bit of that going on. Boromir is not necessarily totally on board, although in the conversations between Frodo and Faramir, we do learn that Faramir thinks that Boromir would have 
you know, revered Aragorn if he was, you know, if he proved his actual claim to being the king of the heir to the kings of Arnor and Gondor. And, but he also says that, you know, they had not yet become rivals in the wars of Gondor, and therefore he hadn't really been put to the test, and so it's unclear exactly how Boromir would have really reacted at the very end. So we get the idea that Faramir thinks that Boromir may not have been entirely on board with the idea of the return of the king. That doesn't matter as much, though, because Boromir dies, and so that doesn't really affect the plot. But it does give us a little bit of a key into Boromir's character. Some other subtle hints that we get of Boromir's character come in different points of the story where he does seem to not really terribly care for Aragorn's leadership, especially in certain decisions. He doesn't like the idea of entering Lorien. Um, whereas Faramir, Faramir, whenever he talks to Frodo, makes him makes a mention of Lothlorien and says that it would be perilous to just actually seek out elves at this stage, and especially Lothlorien, uh, just because of the nature of how men and elves have become estranged and the, and the power that elves have. He says that there have actually been people in Gondor within living memory who went to Lothlorien intentionally and never came back. Whereas Aragorn, of course, tells Boromir that nobody who goes to Lothlorien is in any danger unless he brings his own danger with him, basically. So Faramir is a little more reserved in terms of the way he looks at Lothlorien, but he still looks at it as a potentially dangerous endeavor to enter it. So probably, given the circumstances, he wouldn't have fought Aragorn as much about going into Lothlorien simply because the need of the circumstances after having just left Moria and Gandalf having died, there really weren't a whole lot of better options, and Faramir f probably would have had reservations, but probably would not have put up a fight over it. And of course, Boromir eventually goes along with it anyway. Then the major things that really start happening come along with the entry into Lothlorien, the encounter with Galadriel, and what follows, of course, with the breaking of the Fellowship. Galadriel, of course, sees into Boromir's mind, and Boromir describes this in both the book and the movie, but in the book it's rather different than in the movie, because in the movie he just says that, you know, there's still hope, you know, but there's nothing really concrete there, whereas in the book he really kind of says that he feels like he was offered some choice, uh, with one of the choices seeming very... Um, attractive but obviously wrong but he never really says what it is but you kind of know what it is just by you know what happens later so the idea is he seems to have been offered the choice of you know take the ring become powerful and you know do whatever as opposed to do what you're supposed to do which is protect Frodo and accompany him as long as you want to or as long as you you know have to so Faramir, because of what we know about his nature and being less inclined to take the ring, and this is really clear in the Two Towers, he even says, I have no desire to take the ring at all. So we we have every reason to think that he would not have had the same kind of problem Boromir did. But it's after that point, and Sam actually mentions this in the conversations with Faramir, that after that point, Boromir really kind of knew what he wanted. It was kind of always there under the surface, but after the encounter with Galadriel, it was really prominent in his mind, I want to take the ring and I want to use it to, you know, defeat Sauron and all this. And we kind of see that where Boromir finally attacks Frodo. So the the first major change in the plot that we would likely see would be Faramir would not have this issue and would not run into a problem in terms of wanting to take the ring. And so you immediately run into the issue of he wouldn't have attacked Frodo and there wouldn't have been that kind of a problem. But it goes a little bit deeper than that, too, because Boromir's interest in taking the ring was noticeable to Frodo, and that was part of the reason why Frodo had decided to leave by himself. So let's take a look at what might have happened in those terms as well. This is where things start to get really complicated in looking at this alternative history, because a lot of things hinge on what happens in the Breaking of the Fellowship. The chapter, that is. Uh, you have a lot of different things happen which really affect the plot in all kinds of ways. Because once the Fellowship is broken, Frodo and Sam go off on their own. They run into Gollum. 
Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli have to chase down a bunch of orcs who captured Merry and Pippin, and that leads them into the war of Rohan versus Isengard. All kinds of things stem from this. And of course, Gandalf meets them in Rohan, so Gandalf is apparently in Rohan trying to work on this whole issue as well. So it's a question of what would have happened if all of that hadn't occurred, and would it have occurred anyway to some extent? So let's look at how that gets set up. As I mentioned, Boromir's interest in the ring is part of the reason that led Frodo to decide, I'm going to leave everybody else behind. It's also partially just because of the danger inherent in the entire enterprise. He didn't want to deal with the guilt of basically taking these people along with him and you know leading them to almost certain death. But Boromir's interest in the ring certainly played a role, and it was Boromir's attempt to persuade him uh, to let him have the ring that really brought Frodo to the decision point. So the question is, if Faramir had been there, had not shown that interest in the ring, what would Frodo have really wanted to do? And what would Aragorn have decided to do? Now there's a whole other video that I could do on that, because one of the things that Aragorn talks about while they're waiting for Frodo to make up his mind is, well, if I was going to send anybody with Frodo, it wouldn't be the entire company. That seems pointless. I would send with him Sam, Gimli, and myself. That's a whole other video we could explore right there. But in terms of the events that follow the breaking of the Fellowship, Frodo might not have taken time off by himself to try to think about the whole issue in the first place. Would any of them have therefore run into the uruk and been, you know, Merry and Pippin been captured? Would any of them have been killed like Boromir was? It's not really clear. But at some point, of course, this decision had to be made, and it had to be made more or less that day. So if Frodo had still decided to go to Mordor by himself, then more than likely what would have happened if Aragorn, you know, basically kind of let him do that, which seems unlikely. Aragorn didn't want Frodo going off on his own. But Aragorn wanted to go to Minas Tirith and aid the wars of Gondor. And he saw the dream that Boromir and Faramir had as a summons because the dream, which is a lot, there's a lot longer rhyme than what Boromir repeats in the movie. In the book, it starts out with seek for the sword that was broken in Imladris it dwells. So it's already telling them to seek for the sword that was broken, which of course is Elendil's sword Narsil, which gets reforged into Anduril. So right off the bat, Aragorn is already thinking in the terms of, I'm being called to Minas Tirith to help them in their war. So if that had gone down that way, Faramir, of course, would have gone back to Minas Tirith as well. That's where he's from. That's where he needs to return to. It's where he has his duties. And Boromir was planning to do the exact same thing. He was basically going to stick with the company as long as they were all headed in more or less the same direction. But as soon as, you know, it was time for him to go to Minas Tirith and anybody else didn't want to go there, then everybody else was going to split. So Boromir was going to do that. Faramir presumably would have done the same exact thing, but if they had decided to go straight to Minas Tirith and there was no battle with the uruk and Merry and Pippin weren't captured, none of them would have ended up in Rohan, except Gandalf, as I mentioned earlier. So what could Gandalf have done by himself? What you know? How would that have played out? That's a whole story in and of itself, but it would have been different, obviously. Aragorn wouldn't have been there to, you know, fight alongside Eomer. Gimli and Legolas, of course, also would not have been there. And though they played a valiant part, it's not clear that that would have resulted in any major plot changes other than Aragorn wouldn't have met Eowyn, and therefore there wouldn't have been that love interest thing going on, which that also is another story in and of itself, which I could get into. Uh... So you've got that. Gandalf probably could have brought about the change in Rohan by himself. I say by himself. Obviously he had help from Treebeard in the Ents, but, you know, without Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli. So that probably wouldn't have drastically changed that, although it probably would have had some effect. Um, so you get a little bit of that. There wouldn't have been any, you know, trip into Rohan. Where would Merry and Pippin have ended up? They would have wanted to go with Frodo. They made that clear from the outset. They made it clear way back in the Shire. They made it clear again before the just before the company broke up that they were going to stick with Frodo no matter what he decided to do. So Frodo, of course, didn't want them to follow him along. So it's not 
you know, he, if he wanted to leave them behind, he still would have had to have snuck off. And if he did, what then would Mary and Pippin have done? Knowing Mary and Pippin, they probably would have tried to follow him, even if they didn't exactly know where he went. And who knows what that would have led to. So there's all kinds of different ways that this could play out. If the Urukai still would have managed to find the fellowship and therefore, you know, a battle would have ensued and who knows what else, would Faramir have been the one to die? That's an interesting question by itself as well, because if Frodo makes the trip down to Athelion and Faramir is the one who is dead and Boromir is the one who is still in Gondor defending against, you know, the, the attack of Mordor, that raises some really interesting issues because now Boromir, who is the lesser of the two when it comes to resisting the ring, would have been in the position of deciding, what do I do now that I have this ring here? Then again, would that have actually happened? Because part of the reason in the book that Faramir finds out that they have the ring in the first place is that Sam kind of blurts it out. And Sam had his guard lowered by the fact that Faramir was a really nice guy, the fact that he spoke well of elves. You know, he, he was basically just generally a, a, a more suited to what Sam liked and therefore a little more disarming than Boromir perhaps would have been. Boromir wouldn't have necessarily gone in for any of that, and so Sam might have kept his suspicions up. But then that still raises the question, what would Boromir have done with these two hobbits wandering through Athelion when, in fact, it's Faramir actually says, it's I'm under orders to basically kill anybody that wanders through here unless they're here by the leave of Denethor. So would Boromir have been a little more hasty in doing that? Would he have taken them back to Minas Tirith? That's, you know, that's a, certainly a possibility as compared to what Faramir ended up doing. And what would have happened with Gollum? Gollum, of course, managed to evade capture initially, but then was eventually captured with the help of Frodo, would Frodo have even helped to capture Gollum if Boromir had been in a different position? Would Gollum have just been killed uh, outright by Boromir, uh, well, by the men under Boromir's command, as opposed to Faramir, who was, you know, a little slower to act on something like that? So there's just tons of different things that could have gone differently. If Gollum had died because of Boromir's actions, then they probably never would have made it into Mordor at all. And if Boromir had taken Frodo and Sam back to Minas Tirith, then we get a really different picture of what would have happened, because then Denethor gets the ring, and you have to sort out how all that works out. And I mean, the, the, the repercussions of Faramir coming along are potentially enormous. Some ways it might turn out better, some ways it might turn out worse. It's really not clear. But... It's one of the few instances where, in Tolkien's mythology, the thing which seems to be aimed at by whatever providential force is acting isn't achieved. So, generally speaking, when you see something providential occurring in Tolkien, it leads to a good outcome. So I would tend to think that if Faramir had gone, which seems to be the goal of whatever providential force was acting, he probably would have actually done a better job and everything else would have turned out better. How? Probably none of the Fellowship would have died. Merry and Pippin may not have been captured by uruk but even if they were, it still would have worked out for Rohan because they would have been the ones to wake up Treebeard. So you have, you know, there it would have turned out well one way or the other. It's just a question of how the details played out. That's my suspicion. Now, of course, it is always possible that, you know, in Tolkien's mind, the whole result was always going to be Boromir coming but then that begs the question of why Faramir had the dream first, so I'm not sure I feel comfortable going down that road. But at any rate, I think we can say that Faramir was the preferred choice, and therefore the result of him going would have been better. So, you know, you could work that out in a number of different ways. You can imagine all kinds of different scenarios. But here I just tried to explore the many different avenues that that sort of storyline could have gone down. So. Before I get too much deeper, I think I better cut it off here. If you enjoyed that look at what might have happened if Faramir had gone to Rivendell instead of Boromir. Certainly a wide-ranging topic, and I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. If you have any particular ideas as to what might have happened differently, please do leave those in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and share it around. If you want to check out a couple of my previous videos, you can find those here, and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking this button here. 
And you can follow me on Twitter at J-R-R-T Lore. Until next time, I'm the Tolkien Geek signing out for the Tolkien Lore channel. Namariye. No